Sorry, there, there are, I, I know about seven. Just a flake. I know about. I'm sorry. Godless I know about is, seven. He, yeah, he, cranium is just Godless a flake. Cranium, I, I like him. I, yeah, I hope he grows up one day and realizes he's in something really sick and awful. But I wouldn't uh, call him. <laughs> what? I wouldn't call him a flake. It's just wrong. Oh, I just meant not a not well, a. I mean, he's just. I don't his think position is a flake. Some of the others, yeah. I, I just meant his, his position is a flakish I position. I think he's more of a clown. Although, mean, so, man, let me understand this because I, you know, maybe it's me. I'm a little fucked up, maybe. But I'm funny. How? I mean, funny like I'm a clown. I amuse you. I make you laugh. I'm here to fucking amuse you. What do you mean funny? Funny how? How am I funny? So just before we get started, if you're supporting my channel through Maker Support, please cancel your donation. There's money banked on that site, but they won't let me withdraw it and their customer support isn't answering emails or tweets. I want to thank you very, very much for your support, but I don't want you losing money to a company that doesn't seem to be doing its primary job. With that out of the way, let's jump into this week's video. You know, I was thinking now as Ireland has legalized abortion, in what was such a staunchly Catholic, staunchly religious state, uh, obviously had a, a population that was Protestant, if those who were alive in the 80s remember that. But you look at why now we're in such a radical secularization. Yeah, the, the secularization had nothing to do with the numerous sex abuse scandals and subsequent cover-ups perpetrated by the Catholic Church. Quote, the church's standing has taken a series of severe blows over the last decade, in particular suffering damage from a series of devastating sex abuse scandals. The sense is widespread that it has reacted sluggishly to the revelations and has been more concerned with defending itself rather than the interests of the victims. The survey showed that those Irish who consider themselves religious had fallen from 69% in 2011 to less than half today. Ireland was ranked 7th in the 57 countries for those describing themselves as convinced atheists. End quote. It couldn't have anything to do with how the Catholic Church handled those sex abuse scandals coming to light either, right? Quote, SOCA, which stands for Irish Survivors of Child Abuse, is angry about a deal between the Catholic Church and the Irish government in 2002 that resulted in the taxpayer footing most of the bill for compensating those abused in religious institutions. The deal resulted in the church having to pay out $128 million of $1.3 billion compensation bill. Last year, Ireland's Comptroller and Auditor General found that only $85 million had been paid out of the church funds. On top of its criticism of the deal, Soka said the church should at least be forced to pay out in full the agreed $128 million, end quote. So not only did the Catholic Church abuse children, but it covered up the problem to save their reputation. And once they were convicted, they offloaded the cost largely onto the taxpayer. And then, to add insult to injury, didn't even pay the full amount they were legally responsible for. Of course, the radical secularization, as you put it also has nothing to do with the church continuing to teach things like creationism in the classroom or their attempt to indoctrinate children with their myths. For example, quote, The Guardian spoke to parents who reported children being assigned prayers for homework, given religiously themed artwork and reading books, taught creationism on nature walks, and enlisted in the construction of prayer stations with religious icons on school premises. It's hard to challenge this. You don't want to be the parent who turns up every day to argue with the teachers, said one. End quote. And if all that wasn't enough, the idea that secularization is the way to go certainly has nothing to do with the Catholic Church's policy on faith-based discrimination when it comes to education. Quote, Under the existing system, the Roman Catholic Church controls 90% of Ireland's public elementary schools, owning the property and appointing school boards and principals, even though the government pays the bills. Many non-Catholic parents, particularly in small towns and rural areas, find they have no choice but to send their children to local schools teaching Catholic faith formation. And in years where the school intake is oversubscribed, a baptism barrier permits the school to refuse a place to a local non-Catholic child if a Catholic child, even one from outside the area, has applied for the same spot. End quote. I'm sure you're about to bring up all of that in the next few minutes, right? And why there seems to be a rejection of traditional biblical teachings. And I really think it's because we've given up. As, as a human race, we no longer believe in the inspired words of the Bible. On the contrary, they haven't given up. They're now fighting back against the religious oppression forced upon them by religious institutions, and they're finally coming to realize how unethical those practices were. And by the way, the human race as a whole has never believed in the inspired words of the Bible. A large percentage of the world believed it, somewhere around 30%, but by no means the majority. This belief in the Bible has been happening since it began as a religion. As a human race, 
far more people believe in other religions than they do your religion. And this has always been the case. And why I think that is, is because we don't want to explore anymore. We don't want to explore the depths, not only of the human intellect and mind and ability to reason, but we don't want to figure out our purpose. We don't want to figure out our why anymore. Sure we do. Some of us don't want to do it looking through the lens of your ancient myths. You can explore the depths of the human intellect without believing in your unsubstantiated claims. In fact, it becomes easier because we don't have to ignore certain facts because they clash with our religious beliefs. We're free to explore everything and go where the evidence leads us. You don't need magic to realize your purpose. You don't need the supernatural to think about what's important in your life. Because we just want to be told what to do. Yeah, and that's why you have religion. If you believe and read the Bible, it doesn't allow you to simply hear something and just go do something. What are you even talking about? The Bible doesn't allow you to hear something and go do something? What does that even mean? Is that supposed to be some sort of deepity? That's exactly what the Bible allows you to do. People treat it like an instruction manual. They read something in that manual and then they act upon that belief. For example, they might read or be taught the verses in the Bible that seem to condemn same-sex couples, and then either directly or indirectly act out the belief that they're abominations. Beliefs often lead to action. This is why religion is so dangerous. It provides beliefs that are supposedly provided by a deity, and that deity can't be wrong, and its dictates aren't to be questioned. You really have to think, and you have to be enough of an intellectual to understand that the inspired word is such a, a different plane of existence and of knowledge, we should rather be thanking God every day for the ability to even understand, even realize that there is a higher plane of existence, that, that there is something greater than us, but we don't want to do that anymore. Because you have provided no good evidence for your position. You also haven't provided good reasons for why we should believe in your idea of a higher realm and God over other people's ideas on their higher realm and God. And no, your book is kind of poorly written. It provides no information that someone living in that time period couldn't write down. It's fairly boring, and you can find books at any bookstore that are written far more accurately and beautifully than the Bible. There's really no reason to believe it was either written by or inspired by a deity. Hell, you'd think a deity would realize that a book is a poor medium in which to get its message across. Even Christians should be able to see how badly that turned out, with several thousand different denominations all claiming to know the truth. So really the secularization, the atheist movement, is because we have given up. It's our fault. And as Christians, as our Jewish brothers, and I don't think the, 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 our, our Muslim uh, friends in the Middle East have this issue because they're not this, in this, involved in this radical secularization. Whew. I wonder why that is. Here we have 13 countries where atheists can legally be put to death. Afghanistan with 99.7% of its population identifying as Muslim. Iran, 99.4% identify as Muslim. Malaysia is 60% Muslim, although Islam is constitutionally the country's official religion. The Maldives are 85-90% to 90 Muslim. 100% of Mauritania is Muslim. In Nigeria, we have a nearly 50-50 split between Islam and Christianity. Pakistan is 95% Muslim. Qatar is 68% Muslim. While Christians and Hindus make up a large chunk of the rest of the population. Nearly 100% of Saudi Arabia is Muslim. 99% of Somalia is Muslim. 90% of the Sudan is Muslim. Nearly 100% of the UAE are Muslims, and the same goes for Yemen. So, yeah, I can't imagine why countries that literally kill atheists would have a harder time realizing secular communities and secular governments. Call me crazy, but if rapid secularization means you're less likely to kill people because they don't buy into your religion, I'd consider that a good thing. And if we don't start paying attention, if we just start reading and understanding why we're here and giving ourselves that everlasting hope, we'll forever, I believe, live in hopelessness. And that's just not a life I want to live. Well, I don't live in hopelessness, and I don't believe in your God. Facts also don't care about your feelings. You don't need everlasting hope to have hope or to enjoy the life you are currently living. That's all I have for this video. Thank you for watching. Take care and cheers.